Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a new battery from Red Odeo. It is a 12 volt 165 amp hour battery. But the kicker is, it's still a Group 31. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have. Alright, when you first open it up you're going to see a quick start guide, a bigger product manual, and a big piece of styrofoam with your post bolts and your post bolt covers. And then there's the battery. Alright, pulling this battery straight out of the box, a couple of things that I like is that on the top it does tell you the basic information about the battery. It tells you that it's a 12.8 voltage nominal. Um, the rated capacity is 165 amp hours which gives that a 2112 watt hour capacity or 2112 to my Rush fans out there. The charging voltage is 14.4 give or take 0.2 volts. The maximum continuous charging and discharging is 165 amps and that means that the maximum continuous output is again 2112 watt hours. And it does say that it can do 165 amps of continuous charge and discharge and it does say that it can do up to 825 amps for like a second. But what I really want to know is what happens when you reach 200 amps or 300 amps? What will the battery do? So we'll be testing that in a little bit. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test the voltage at the terminals to make sure that this battery is operational. So let's do that now. All right, and the voltage of the battery is 13.14. That is perfect. And like I said before, this is a Group 31 battery, so that means it is 13 inches across. It is eight and a half inches tall, and it is six and three quarters inches deep. And this battery weighs in at 33 and a half pounds. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and charge this battery all the way up to 100%, which is 165 amp hours. And then I'm gonna do a discharge test to make sure that I do get that 165 amp hours that we paid for. All right, here are the results for the Red Odeo 165 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. As you can see on the graph, at the first 5% of this test, our voltage is still 13, which is really good. Uh, even though this test is only, you know, I'm only pulling about six and a half amps. So it's a very low C rate test. Uh, but I really, I really feel like it shows you uh, how the voltage curve goes on this battery. So it stays at 13 all the way through like the first, almost the first 30%. It's at 12.98. Uh, and then like at the 95th percentile of the battery, it's still at 12.33. I mean, that is a incredible curve for this battery. And at the bottom, you can also see that our capacity for this 165 amp hour battery was actually 170.78. Uh, that means the energy was 2,183.44 watt hours. And the battery says on the front that it's 2112 watt hours. That gives it an average voltage of 12.78 and it is a 12.8 volt nominal battery, so we are right on the mark. So let's go ahead and do some high amperage testing. All right, well I have my high amperage testing all set up. Let's go ahead and uh, look to see what I have. All right, here is the Red Odeo 12 volt 165 amp hour battery. I have an amp clamp right here, which is reading right now at around, right around one amp, and that is what uh, this 12 volt 5,000 watt pure sine wave inverter from MX Moonfree is using up along with this uh, new wave induction cooktop just sitting on idle. I also have a voltmeter right here which shows 13.66 and I have a 1,000 watt heat gun. Now this battery, it has the ability to do 165 amps of continuous discharge and charge. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to run right around 1,900 watts continuous for five minutes. And that's going to be this heat gun and uh, this new wave set at 900 watts. So let's go ahead and begin. Well, actually, right before we begin, let's go ahead and pull up the app because the app uh, is also included in this battery. It's a smart battery. So let's pull up the app. 
All right, there we go. On the app, you can see that the voltage is 13.6, which is exactly what this reads. And the app is actually showing a current of, you know, it's kind of fluctuating between like zero and like 1.3. And, uh, you know, that's fine for what we're doing right now. But let's go ahead and try to get our 1900 uh, watts going through, close to as, as close to 165 amps as I can. And we'll see if it can run it for five minutes with no problem. All right, heat gun. You can see that the amperage, uh, it has gone up to 95 amps. And now let's go ahead and turn on the new wave at 900 watts. Let's go ahead and say hi, start. And our current is actually 170, ooh, 180, oh, it's 180 amps. Hopefully it starts going down. Yeah, it's showing 186 here. So let's go ahead and lower this to 600. And now we're down to about 158 amps on the app. It's showing 153, 154. So you know what? Let's go ahead and see if we can do 180 amps for five minutes. Let's kick this back up to 900. And we are now at 183, 182. Okay. And I'll be back in five minutes. All right, well, as you can see, uh, we are right at five minutes and I actually set this timer a little after I started the whole process. So it's probably been like almost six minutes and we've been pulling 182 amps this entire time. And this thing is only supposed to max out at 165. So let's see if we start building up the amperage a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and set this new wave to 1300 watts and we'll see what happens. Our, our current is now jumping up to 200 amps, 212, 213. It looks like we're sitting yeah, right around 212 amps and it shut off. That is actually very good. It shut off what? What did it take? About 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds, something like that to shut off. And that's what I want to see. I want to see this battery shut off, uh, you know, over the max limit, but not like hundreds of amps over the max limit because it does say that it can power 825 amps for like one second. Um, I don't have anything that will come anywhere close to that. And look at that. And after about 30 seconds, it clicks back on and everything starts back up. So I would say it did that test just fine. Uh, also, I want to find out if we can go ahead and power up the ShopSmith. I have a feeling it's going to be able to do it with absolutely no problem. The ShopSmith runs at right around, um, I want to say it pulls about 400 amps and this battery should do it with no problem. So let's just do that real quick. All right, here we go. No problem. No problem at all. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do with this Red Audio battery is I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in a freezer for 24 hours to see if it will charge if it's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. So I'll see you in 24 hours. All right, well, I just pulled this Red Audio 12 volt battery out of my Iceco 12 volt refrigerator and it was set at right around 22 to 24 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So this should be nice and chilled. And I did keep it in there for around 24 hours. Let's go ahead and uh, show the app to kind of find out if it shows the temperature of the battery right now. Uh, right now you can see the power, current, voltage and capacity. That's all just standard. Uh, the voltage is 13.3, but if you go down to at the very bottom to battery information, you can pull that up and it does show the temperature right now and it shows it at 23 degrees Fahrenheit. So it should be below the threshold of cold temperature charging protection. So let's go ahead and set up a charger and get this thing charging. All right, I have a lit time uh, 
20 amp charger right here. It's specific for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Right now it is blinking green. That means it's on standby. What's gonna happen is when I connect this positive connection, it will go to a solid red and it should only do that for about two to three seconds. And then it should go to a solid green, which means that the battery has told the charger to stop charging. So let's go ahead and try it. All right, there we go. It took about, what, three seconds or so? And then the battery uh, did tell the uh, charger to shut off. And it does show at the bottom, if you click on BMS, it does say low temperature protection is enabled. So this battery is working perfectly. All right, I got the Red Audio battery cut open, so let's go ahead and check it out. All right, look at that. It looks like we have some black fiberboard with three very dense uh, cushioning right here. Some very dense padding. We got padding on the sides here. The BMS is on the side. Let's see, we have uh, four four eight gauge wires for the negative and the positive feels like two hmm i'm not sure what they would be i have to cut this jacket off uh i'm guessing that they are two four gauge wires though either two four or two five gauge wires uh, i like how they have the caps on here to protect uh so there's no connection issues uh i'm not sure if i'll be able to get this battery out of here yeah unfortunately I cannot I cannot even budge the cells on this battery at all this thing is just not moving one bit and I really don't want to completely destroy the whole case what I do like about all this is first of all this heat shield it, I like the fact that it keeps the wiring protected from the heat um, also, all the condensed foam keeps everything in place. I do notice that the B positive is screwed and glued right there. I can see that the bus bars for the cells do have a little ridge to uh, allow for expansion and contraction of the cells themselves. And also I see a little tiny blue light right there for the Bluetooth. So the Bluetooth is actually embedded into the board. So that's a nice thing to see. But other than that, I mean, everything looks real clean. There's glue where there's supposed to be. Uh, and it looks like, uh, you know, the glue is actually uh, not just thrown on. It's actually placed on pretty well. So, yeah, from what I can see, I'm pretty happy with this build. All right, so if you have any questions about the Red Odeo 12-volt, 165-amp-hour lithium-ion phosphate battery, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. Um, I'll have a link to this item in my description just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and have a great day. Bye-bye.